is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Do you know what sonar is? Sonar we didn't have all the time. And big ships would actually plow into icebergs. Why would they plow into an iceberg? Because 90% of the iceberg was under the water and they could see it. Sonar, you can see it. But they didn't have sonar and they'd be destroyed. That's the same way it is with the invisible world. Because in this invisible world, all around us, it's alive. And there is a way to have something better than sonar. You not only can change, because this invisible world, it affects your thoughts, it affects your, uh, your marriage, it affects your health, and it's just radiating signals to you. But there is a way to not only be aware of it, but destroy those evil signals. Do you want to learn? Yeah. Do you want to explain to me why you say the, the invisible world is filled with all sorts of activity? Absolutely. Um, what I find is that we think we are walking around and um, doing what we think we want to do on our own, but actually we're getting input from a lot of places. We're getting input from ourselves, we're getting input from the Lord, and we're getting input from the demonic realm. And so there's a spiritual realm talking to us. And as I was coming here, I was asking the Lord what's going on, and the whole thing I kept hearing was all of God's promises are yes and amen. And I felt like if God is speaking that, then the enemy is probably telling people he's forgot about you. He's, there, he's probably telling people, oh, there's no hope. Or, you know that promise he told you years ago? It's not going to come to pass. And I just wanted to speak that, oh, you just want to turn off that station right now, and we're just going to say no to that station and yes to God's promises. You know, it, it came out of your mouth so smoothly, but you know, it's so true. You're listening to another station. You think it's you. But it isn't. You think that that wife or that husband is, is just awful. But that isn't them. You're getting the wrong transmission. Start doing something about it. Turn the channel. Um, it, it affects our mood, our tone. Uh, explain. Right. So what everyone thinks that there's demons just hanging around you all the time, but actually it's a relationship between what you believe they're telling you and you acting it out. So if you actually take that station and you say yes to it and you begin acting out, let's say rage is saying, you need to just hit that person over there. And then you take the swing at them. The enemy can walk away because you've now released an atmosphere that he doesn't have to stir up anymore. And, and you know the picture I have as you're saying that is all this road rage is oh. going on where people are killing people. I mean, and these are people that would never think of this type of rage. Absolutely. But they're being egged on egged with on. that transmitter. Absolutely. Egged on. Okay. What would you say is the first step to having dominion over these voices? 
Well, you have to actually believe it exists. I mean, you have to, you know, what happened in the church is we had discerners that made messes because it was like everything was a demon and we were complaining about stuff. And so the church swung past the truth that we're in a spiritual war all the way over to, it's all good. Oh, there's no demonic. No, there's nothing. And we forget what's shooting at us. And so when my husband says something that hurts my heart, I'm instantly, you know, at him. <laughs> Rather than, oh, oh, wait a minute, that probably was him um, speaking out of what the enemy's telling him to say. Because he knows what's going to hurt my heart. So it's like two against one. It, it is. But <laughs> we have the triune nature of God. So oh, three got... against two. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so okay. We... Um, you say we can literally change atmospheres. Is there a way for us to s discern what's going on in that invisible world in the, from the atmosphere? Absolutely, but you have to practice. Um, I, I find that most people already pick up or sense or, or discern, but they don't know because they just are acting out of it. So once you start paying attention to how is my normal, what, what would that look like, then anything that comes out from that is actually helping me to know, oh, I'm probably picking up and responding to an atmosphere. But you have to practice. You've got to figure it out. You know, I notice a lot of people on diets, I haven't gotten this far, by the way, uh, a lot of people on diets, they know when they're full. I don't know when I'm full, but they know when they're full and they stop. But it came from practice. Practice. Yeah, it has to. You know, I get asked all the time, Donna, how did you learn so much about this discernment? And I said, hindsight. And they're like, no, really, you must have, you know, spent all this time in no, hindsight. I learned so much by um, getting tricked by the enemy <laughs> that I finally realized, oh, you know, trick me once, okay, trick me twice, you don't trick me a third time. And so it's hindsight. It's like, no, practice this stuff. Find out, talk to people. What are you sensing? I was on a trip one time, and I was so grumpy. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just hormonal, you know. And I like to say to women, you can't be hormonal 365 days. Okay, <laughs> your husbands can thank me for that. But I'm, I'm grumpy and I can't change it. And I'm like, God, what's wrong with me? And I think I have the Holy Spirit, but what's wrong with me? And I, I finally decide I better warn my team. So I, I walk up to my team and I said, guys, I'm so sorry, but I'm just feeling grumpy today. And so, you know, if I, if I hurt your heart, I'm so sorry, just, just no upfront, it's not, I'm not trying to. And I look at my team and they're all kind of grumpy looking. And I'm like, oh. Oh, is anybody else grumpy? And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So I just said, okay. So we grabbed hands. We said, you know, we see you, um, irritation. We are not going to partner with you. And we send you back. And instantly, we were all better. How, how about things like health? How does it, how does the invisible world affect that? Well, you know, it. the enemy's always throwing arrows and darts and he's just doing all of this stuff at us and and you know if the enemy says to you um you don't feel good and then you know someone coughs next to you and you're like oh oh oh, oh i don't feel good i mean we actually can partner with what he's saying about the atmosphere you know, you know speaking of that sometimes i hear i have a thought and the thought is uh you're not going to be able to sleep tonight <laughs> and I do what you said. No more, though. I partner with that thought. Yeah. No, it's so important because the enemy's trying to give you to take the bait. And so actually you say, well, the word of God actually tells me that he gives his beloved rest. And so, you know, in, you know that thought, whether it's my thought or the enemy's thought, it still defies the word of God. So it's like, okay, so I hear you restlessness or I hear you whatever. I'm not going to partner with you because I'm the beloved of God and he gives his beloved rest. Now, now you have learned how to discern the atmosphere. And, and to be candid with you, now that my eyes are open, it's really not that difficult. But can anyone learn how to discern the atmosphere? Absolutely. But again, it's practice. And it's talking to people. I mean, I would talk to my friends and say, hey, I'm feeling this. What are you feeling? And sometimes I would feel it different than they would feel it. And so um, it's like trying to learn what is your tell? Well, how do you pick up something? For me, if I'm in a place of the spirit of control, it puts me to sleep. So I mean, I'll just be like, I'm I'm so tired. My son and I were driving and he, we were all excited. He was going to lead worship and we're going across the state line to this other place and we both look at each other and just start, oh, we're going to fall asleep. 
and we both looked at each other. Oh, I see you control, and I'm not going to partner with you. I'm going to send you back, and instantly we are awake again. Yeah, you know that is a statement that's so important. I would like you to look in the camera yeah. and say that statement again, and I want you to remember this yeah. and use it. Right. It's so easy. It's like I see you, enemy. I am not going to partner with you, and I send you back. Here's the truth. <laughs> Ignorance <laughs> is not bliss. We'll be right back. Yeah. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. The Supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So... I made the statement, and you've made it. Ignorance is not bliss. Comment on that. No, I find that so many times um, the Christians stick their head in the sand and they wonder what's hitting their rear ends. You know? <laughs> and it's time for us to start paying attention. I mean, there are agendas, there are atmospheres talking to us all the time. And, you know, Christians need to start uh, actually funding. Um, things that actually have an agenda that we believe in instead of what we do not believe in. And passivity is not going to help us. So just saying, oh, I'll, I'll still shop there when they believe in certain agendas you don't believe in is not going to help. Okay. You talk about thin mm -hmm. and thick places. Explain. Well, you know, a, a thin place for me is when you just walk in and there's the Holy Spirit. You can just feel the presence of God. Um, it can happen in different locations in the same building. You might feel a thin place where you're like, oh, there must be an angel standing here or the Holy Spirit is right here. Um, and, you know, our pastor tells us run to the anointing, run to where you feel that. We've had, you know, glory clouds show up and it's like, what is that? But you can feel the presence. And a thick place is like, almost like when I walk into a thick place, it's like, where did the Holy Spirit go? I mean, I know he's here, but it's so thick between me that it's hard to understand that he's even talking. Uh, you talk about we can uh, tune in or switch off these channels. So you walk into a thick place where it's, it's just really tough to hear God. What do you do? Well, I first begin to speak in tongues, <laughs> and I might do it under my breath, or people think I'm crazy if I do it out loud sometimes, but I find that speaking in tongues actually disengages my mind and engages my spirit. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fight the right fight, because I'm trying to fight in the spirit realm and not in my brain realm. And so we begin to release the Holy Spirit like a and you can feel it start to happen. And then you begin to release the opposite of what you think you're feeling. So. Um, if I'm feeling afraid, I'm just going to begin to, as I get my spirit to get me courage, I'm going, because I'm disconnecting fear, I'm actually going to begin to release peace and I'm going to begin to release um, an attitude of rest instead of an attitude of fear. You actually talk about a weapon that works every time. It's called reject and replace. Yeah, because you want to reject what's coming at you. It's like it, it I see, that's the whole I see you, I'm not going to partner with you and I send you back. I'm rejecting the signal coming. It's like I'm turning that radio station. I have authority over the radio stations that I listen to. And I think most of us don't know that. I think the problem is most of us think it's ourselves. But I tell people when I pray for them, hey, you can hear three voices anytime. I said, there's Father God, he's talking to you. The enemy's talking to you and you're talking to you. So let's figure out whose voice you want to listen to. Now, you said that you discern the atmosphere and you can teach others to discern the atmosphere. Absolutely. Tell me about the time you discerned an atmosphere of suicide. 
Yeah, we were on a trip actually, and, and I was kind of given a heads up. They said, you're gonna come into a region where they're having suicides have been happening, and we want you, that's one of the things we want you to do when you put on this conference. We want you to stop this. I'm like, absolutely, let's go do it. And so we came up. Came I mean, how, how would you like to be walking to a conference and say, uh, uh, we, ha we have these suicide packs and everything. I want you to stop it. And would you say that? Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just didn't want that to pass over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. And so um, we actually went there and we did the conference. And uh, my son has a song that actually breaks the anointing over um, suicide. And so he was playing it in the background. And we got people together and began to pray. And we repented, you know, for any way we first had ever partnered with, with death or with thoughts like that. And then we um, told it, you don't have authority over it. And we released life into the region and we just began having the whole everyone that came was releasing life and they just began speaking the opposite and it broke over the region yeah you know it's so sad people hear these voices and they don't know they're tuned into someone else no and they pay, they think it's themselves yeah. How torture that must be, torment in the mind. You know, I tell people, if you are tired of taking thoughts captive, taking thoughts captive, which we should do, and you just can't stop it, I'm wondering if it's not your thought you're trying to take captive. And you might need to just change the channel. Hmm. When not only change the channel, when we come back, I want you to talk about shifting the atmosphere. Absolutely. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day we go about our lives with tunnel vision, but Scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing <laughs> multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. On It's Supernatural, Sid spoke some words of healing. My hip had been hurting and feeling like it was loose for some time. So I said, what about my hip, Lord? As I pointed to the area that was hurting, Sid said something like, oh, wait a minute, God just showed me he is healing someone's hip. My hip was instantly healed, praise God. I was heartbroken. I had lost my job, I was collecting unemployment. But Sid, as a result of watching your TV programs and going through your monthly mentoring DVDs, all I can do is rejoice. And God is beginning to reverse the curse over our finances. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. ISN. The It's Supernatural online network is not just another Christian TV network. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. ISN lets me watch my favorite shows anytime I want. These exclusive programs are life-changing. Multitudes report getting healed and having their prayers answered. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, one, one of the tips you have for us is to start paying attention to how you feel. Yeah, uh, the phrase I like to use is 
check yourself at the door. And it's like, what does that mean? It's like every time I, I, I start to go somewhere, I check myself before I enter the place. How do I feel right now? I check. I feel good. Do I feel bad? It's kind of like a word of knowledge in your body. It's like you check your body. My body feels great. All of a sudden, my knee hurts. Oh, oh my knee hurts. Oh, wait a minute. Someone must have a bad knee. Let's, let's take care of that. It's the same in the spirit realm. I check myself at the door. Am I happy? Am I, am I carrying the fruit of the spirit? Okay. Um, do I look like Jesus right now? Awesome. Because when I walk through that door, anything that tempts me to um, act differently is probably a broadcast that I get to turn off. Tell me, speaking of broadcast, uh, there's, a, there's a horrible epidemic uh, that seems to be happening all over. Little children are coming home and they're saying, Mommy, Daddy, am I a boy or am I a girl? And they're getting it from school. Yeah. Tell me about your friend that had that yeah. encounter. Yeah, one of the stores in, um, a lot of stores now have decided that you get to choose which bathroom you go to, whether you think you're male or female. It's not even how you're dressed, you know? And so um, they went into one of these stores and um, she was shopping and she had her five-year-old son in the, the cart and she's shopping around and nobody's around her. And all of a sudden her little son stands up and says, and she looks and she goes, well, of course you are, honey. You're a man of God. And she looks around, there's nobody around her. And she realizes, oh, my son is picking up a broadcast of confusion that has been allowed because the store has decided you get to choose who you are. Mm. Well, can every believer be a walking transmitter? You know, we are already a walking transmitter. <laughs> I just want us to be a godly walking transmitter. So, yes. Well, when you catch yourself transmitting something you wish you hadn't been, yeah. what do you do about it? Well, yeah. I mean, hopefully we do it less and less, but I still find myself, I repent. The first thing I do is I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm sorry that I partnered with it. You know, God told um, Cain that sin is crouching at your door, but you must master it. And so I'm like, I might have to say, God, I let that master me. I'm so sorry that I bit into that thought and I, I was spoke wrong or I was mean. And I just say, I, I just, I repent and I send it back. Now, you told me about you and your son discerned a sexual atmosphere. Explain. Yeah, we were we were in a foreign country and um, we were walking around the town. It felt great. I mean, it was a little impoverished, but it felt great. And we went to bed and he's in one room and I'm in the other. And um, I woke all night long. I dreamt I had nightmares of waking up right before being raped, like over and over and over. And I was like, oh, get up. So I was kind of tired. So I go to my son's room and I knock on the door and, and he comes out like, ah. Uh. And I said, ah, uh -huh, you've got jet lag. And he's like, no, mom, it's not that. He said, all night long, I dreamt about rescuing women from being raped. Clue, there's the clue. So we took it to the church and we asked the church, um, what do you want to do about this? And they said, well, we already are walking the streets as street pastors, you know, we have um, signs that tell who we are. And I said, well, how about you begin shifting the atmospheres? How about you begin releasing, instead of violence, you start releasing that men would actually protect the women instead of violating. You know, that instead of lust, there would be love because lust takes and love gives. What, what do you, give us a, a tip on having the right transmissions in our homes. Yeah. Having peace in our homes. And having peace in our homes. You know what the best thing is, is you have a family meeting <laughs> and you say, hey family, what do we want this transmission to be from our home? Because I want to buy in from everyone. I don't want to be the mom, that the spiritual mom who tells me, oh, don't say that. No, don't say that. Um, I want them to be able to say to me, mom, don't say that. Um, we had a time with Timmy and I, I was really frustrated and I actually had an outburst of anger and my little son Timmy says, Mommy, where's Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> At the mouth of a babe. Okay, time to pray. Yes. It's time that we come to our senses and we under and pray for a supernatural increase of sensitivity and discernment. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to start with this. I just want to have everyone say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy 
come yeah, Holy the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit in you that gives you the power and the authority over what is coming at you. And so from that place of, of standing in the Holy Spirit, we just release you. I just say to you that because you are seated with Christ in the heavenlies above the powers, principalities, and authorities, that you will now, through the understanding of what you're, you're hearing, maybe for the first time, you will actually take authority over that, that the Holy Spirit will rise up in you and you'll say, hey, hey, not on my watch. I declare over you greater discernment without fear of it's going all going to be negative and you're going to pick it up and it's going to scare you. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Not on my watch. Say it. <laughs> my watch. <laughs> Amen. The supernatural of God knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. Our world doesn't need another Christian TV network. What the world needs is life-changing programs that have a tangible outpouring of God's presence. And people need to be able to access it whenever they need it, wherever they are. ISN makes it possible to meet you right at your point of need with live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on mobile devices or smart TVs. Or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural and other exclusive programs in our online library. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Whenever, wherever, God's not limited, and neither is your access to the supernatural of God. Next week on It's Supernatural, every person that knows the Lord has a God package inside of them, and you cannot accomplish your destiny unless you know what God has packaged inside of you. And I am believing that everyone is going to get revelation right now. <laughs>